the monetary system is built upon debt and more debt equals more control. Today we will discuss how Greece hits the flush as its third bailout is accepted. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. We're going to get into this third bailout for Greece, how initially many people believed that they would have to go back to the drachma, that they would be forced out of the EU, but of course, the can has been kicked down the road yet again. Let's get into this here. Out of the AP, after grueling, often angry negotiations that tested the limits of the European unity, Greece struck a preliminary rescue deal with its creditors Monday that should avert an imminent financial catastrophe, but also guarantees years more hardship and sacrifice for its people. I'm getting a little bit of deja vu because this happened in the second bailout for Greece, and it happened in the first bailout for Greece, and every single time there is a bailout there is always a loss of sovereignty this was a topic of mine particularly with QE 1 2 and 3 and also with the tarp bailouts that we saw in the US nothing is changing here at all right here so the Prime Minister flew home to sell the bailout plan to skeptical lawmakers and political allies they basically accused him and they also said this was a German-led coup. Very interesting. I'll get into that once again in a moment. Right here, they said to close the deal with its partners in the euro currency, Cyprus had to consent to a raft of austerity measures, including sales tax hikes and pension and labor reforms, measures he had campaigned vociferously against over the last five years, Greece's financial crisis. So he went out there and said, we are not going to give in no steps backwards. We are going to not increase taxation. We are not going to have any limits on the pensions. We're not going to do anything to those. You get everything and no need to worry. But unfortunately, at this time, they had to give in. Let's move into this right here. What we're talking about is, once again, something that I have predicted, many other people predicted as well. Athens commits to transferring, quote-unquote, valuable assets to an independent fund which will raise money either by selling them or squeezing fat profits out of them, raising 50 billion euros over the length of Greece's eventual bailout deal. They're going to transfer, what does that mean, transfer valuable assets. Okay, further down at the bottom is exactly what it means we are going to have a fire sale of Greek assets. Something that I have been warning about consistently, not just with Greece, but every single country who is put into debt. This is the reason that nations are put into debt. It is a system of control designed by technocratic elite, designed by the bankers, designed by people that sit offshore deciding exactly what's going to happen. And then these billionaires all buy up these assets for pennies on the dollar. This is what's happening in Greece. It's happening before our very eyes. But yet, there will be those out there who deny it even as it's happening. Why? Because they have their money invested in this system and they will do anything to not believe it. They are on the Titanic sinking. And as it's sinking, they consistently deny what's happening. In my book, I talked about this, quoting PIMCO's uh, former uh, CIO, Bill Gross. Unless entitlements are su substantially reformed, I am confident that this country will default on its debt. And he's referring to the U.S. right there. So they had to reform entitlements. Basically, what he's saying is, unless they stop giving as much money as they do for the Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, they're going to have to default or, of course, default, meaning they can hyperinflate their currency. Now, the ECB could, in a way, do that for Greece, but that's really not how it works. So they would have to go bankrupt. So what do they do instead? Well, Bill Gross knew exactly what 
the US would have to do. And the same situation occurred in Greece. Very, very crucial to know this type of information in advance so that you can see ahead to the future. It's pretty obvious what was going to have to happen. Out of the telegraph, and you know, this is quite amazing to read this, international inspectors will have the power to veto legislation. The radical left Syriza government will be forced to repeal a raft of laws passed since it took power in January, stripping away the last fig leaf of sovereignty. How many times have I said the word sovereignty on this channel? I've uh, really lost count here. It's unconditional surrender. We get serious austerity with no debt relief. We have a, we have foreign supervisors crawling over everything. Every single time they go ahead and do this, they lose sovereignty. I've always said this. This is always the case. The independent Greek party in the ruling coalition called the deal a German coup and said it would not have anything to do with it. Now, this is some strong words right here. Essentially, what they're saying is that Germany found a way to put a stranglehold against Greece, have the full control. But it is not just Germany, really, that when you think about it, you need to understand that there are people that sit above all of these governments. And the one face of that is the EU. They make the decisions for what happens in these countries. They're making the laws. They are the ones deciding to now repeal laws that were put in place by the ruling government as far as i'm concerned that is what they call neo-colonial servitude very good words right there let's move into this here paul krugman of all people is talking about this saying the emu demands are quote madness on every level what we, we've learned about these past couple weeks is that being a member of the eurozone means that the creditors can destroy your economy if you step out of line this has no bearing at all on the underlying economics of austerity i can disagree with this individual here on a bunch of different things but in this case He's saying it right. And, you know, this right here is something that he should have been saying, you know, when the Money GPS was saying it years ago. This goes beyond harsh into pure vindictiveness, complete destruction of national sovereignty, and no hope of relief. It is presumably meant to an uh, meant to be an offer Greece can't accept. But even so, it's a grotesque betrayal of everything the European project was supposed to stand for. The intention of the EU is not for collectiveness and gathering together and all of this peace and prosperity. It is control. That's why they set up an unelected set of technocrats that make the laws that have been putting the stranglehold against these nations like Greece. And then we have Spain and Italy and Portugal and Ireland and other countries that are basically hurting. They can never fall into these so-called you know the the treaties that they set up where they say you know what you cannot be any higher than 60 percent debt to gdp ratio no nation is finding itself within that every nation is in debt even when they use their fake numbers this is a complete hoax that's what we're being sold as a hoax Alexis Tsipras, the Greek prime minister, returned to Athens on Monday facing a rebellion within his own government after he accepted the most intrusive program ever mounted by the EU. If there's a fourth bailout of Greece, which, you know, it looks like that's the way this is going to have to go, it's going to be even more intrusive. More assets will need to be sold off. You're going to have all of the precious assets, assets of not only individuals, but of the government and you know, structures that have been there for thousands and thousands of years being sold off to companies and corporations. And you will find this to be a reality in every country around the world as the mega corporations begin owning everything. You have massive corporations that actually have a bigger GDP than many of these uh, countries that are out there right now. It is amazing to see this. I wanted to connect this in with this issue here. Detroit has fewest cops patrolling the streets in nearly 100 years. 
while we have all of these economic disaster going on, there's a collapse going on, you're also having cutbacks, but they're cutting back in areas where it is most needed. You know, you can have wars going on overseas and the money just keeps pouring into the military industrial complex. But when you need police on your own streets to be there to actually protect the streets in the most dangerous areas, they're never there. The funding is always cut. But when you want revenue generation for, you know, for it to be squandered, of course... You don't have this. It is amazing to see the way that the governments squander all of the tax dollars. Just somehow I wanted to connect this in. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. Please understand that I am here to bring out the truth. I said there would be a third bailout. I predicted it in my book, of course, predicted the second bailout. It doesn't take a genius to figure this out. They tell you, they give you the playbook, and then as it happens, I'm basically just calling it as I see it. I hope that you all understand that. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. Comment down below. I really, truly appreciate all of the positive comments that I have been getting i do read all the comments uh, for the let's say the current day's video as well as the previous day's video um, it's hard to keep up with it all but i do uh, want to get back to each and every one of you i try my best hope you do appreciate that as well last but not least if you found this video informative i know you'll find my book the money gps even more informative and you can actually flip through the book if you go over to Amazon, they have this look inside feature, which allows you to flip through the book for yourself and see if you like it. Take care.